Well, all right, and welcome to The Average Suck Show. Michael Burnoff here, and I have a very, very exciting guest that you're definitely gonna wanna listen to, and you're gonna wanna know really, really cool stuff that he does. If you've ever wanted to travel around the world, find a way to stay at the coolest hotels, most amazing, beautiful resorts in the world, and do it for free while growing your social tribe and being able to surround yourself with the most incredible, incredible people in the world, the biggest influencers in the world, you're definitely gonna wanna hear what Zach Benson has to share with you about how to grow your online business, how to get yourself out there in front of the world and how to use the power of social media, especially Instagram, to really make your business work. And the best part about it is he figured all this out in the last three years. And if you ask what he did prior, that's gonna blow your mind. A professional break dancer, somebody, I mean, remember break dancing back in the day, professional break dancer, a guy that has been on So You Think You Can Dance. But most importantly, my man, Zach Benson, I wanna talk about how we met and I wanna share with the world. I mean, you, I saw recently some of these places you've been, where's, the, where's, where's some of crazy you've been recently? Oh man, so yeah, I was just in, um Maldives. Where is the Maldives? Everybody says I want to go there. Where is the Maldives? The Maldives. Can you spell so, it first? Yeah, M A L D I V E S. Smarter than me. So okay, it's right it. by Sri Lanka, maybe like spell, five spell hours. Spell Sri Lanka. S R I L A N K A. You like a spelling bee champion? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And then um, yeah, so it's about twenty hours to get there. It's like one of those huts on the water, crystal clear blue water. A lot of people go for surfing and scuba diving. It's one of the most beautiful places on earth. What were you doing out there? And uh, I collaborated with the hotel. It's twenty three thousand dollars a night, um, where all the celebrities, everybody stays, and basically helping them train their team, and also yeah, just chilling in paradise. For a week. That's a really, really yeah. good life. So you travel the world. Yeah. Past three years, actually, I've gotten over 700 nights, all for free. So pretty much like two years of free hotels at some of the world's most luxurious two resorts. Years? Yes. All right. And you're like going to show plus. us a little bit how to do that? Not only for me, but also for my friends. So I've helped a lot of like influencers and people who just want to go on these trips and you know, create beautiful memories with their their friends and loved ones. You make me look good too, because you came you came to one of our events and yeah. I ran into Darren, and he That's said, right. "Hey, my wife and I are going to where did they go? Bali, Bali, Indonesia." Yeah. And thanks to Zach, and I'm like, "How'd you do that?" And I'm like, he's like, "Well, he just just told me what he did, and he made it work." So I want to backtrack <laughs> yeah. real quick because this show is really about people living an yeah. above average life, and that's mm -hmm. something you're doing. Is this what you thought you were going to be doing ten years ago? Yeah, ten years ago, I was a broke break dancer, right? Just trying. What to... What does a broke break dancer look like? I mean, you know, like I didn't have. It's any... funny. I said professional breakdowns. So they don't get paid well, do they? No. Okay. <laughs> no, not at all. Like a lot of them are struggling just to get by, right? It's like they're trying to do performances and battles and teach workshops. How but... much money can you make in a battle? Because I've seen, I've seen. Um, yeah. Eminem do battles. And oh yeah, yeah, like yeah, 10 yeah. Bucks back in a Shoot, rap yeah. battle. What does like if we were to go in the other room and uh -huh. battle right now? Yeah. What would we make? Okay, well, uh, for one on one competition, you can make maybe a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> now they have Red Bull BC One. You know, some really big competitions where you can, you know, win tens of thousands of dollars. Um, so the game has really changed, right? And so has the dance. So you see people doing all these crazy, like, flips and power moves and head spins. And, Dangerous? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a whole nother level. Back in the day, 30 years ago, people were just doing backspins. Now like, like, how old are you? Well, um, yeah, I just turned 33. So how, how does a 33 look? It's break hard to tell because like, I'm break, Asian. Break, <laughs> dan break, break dancing is my. Yeah. Break, it's hilarious. Break dancing is my like generation. Yeah. How did you get involved with break dancing? Yeah, I wish I would have grew up like grown up in like the 70s or like 80s, 90s. Okay, you're yeah. born. You're what? Born but I was 2000? born in 86. Okay, same yeah. thing. Okay. But um, yeah, it's just it's everywhere now. So it's like it doesn't cost anything to do it, right? It's just, you have you music. Just you have cardboard. You. Dance. You just need a floor. Yeah. Okay, got it. So how did you, how did you get? How, I gotta ask this question because I, I love talking about transitions in life. How did you? Uh, where were you born? Yeah. So I was born in uh, Busan, South Korea. Okay, spell and it. And then uh, I'm just kidding. You yeah. Spell anything else. And then I was uh, adopted by my parents in the states. So I grew up in Iowa. Okay. And lived there my whole life. Um, I didn't have my first Korean food till I actually went over to Korea um, ten years ago. So like fake Korean. And found my mom. So yeah, I'm like you found your mom. I'm like a Twinkie, like what, what, that's what they say. What, what do you mean? You, what do you mean you found your mom? So I went back to Korea ten years ago, found uh, to try to find my birth mom. So I contacted my adoption agency. It's like, hey, I want to find my mom. Filled out all these papers, and then they did you did a search. get along with your parents that were raising you? Yeah, yeah. There's so some of the best like? people in the world. My wife's adopted, and and her yeah. parents are her parents. They at six days old, Definitely. she was adopted. Her parents are her parents. Never even considered. Yeah. Uh, finding her her real parents like oh, where yeah. was that just like, how old were you when you realized that 
Yeah, well, well, when I wanted to, like, find her and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, it was, this was just, like, uh, in high school. Like, I was just, like... Did you, you just know? take a class in school and, like, you just thought about it, or...? No, it was... A, I, I wanted to, like... I started getting more curious in high school, and then it was in um, after college when I lived on $2 a day for food, performed a year of service. What did you, what did you get for $2 a day? $2 a day. So it was me and six other people. You were breakdancing? And I was a break dancer and then also a volunteer for this company called World Relief. So it's like a resettlement agency for refugees. So it was a okay. volunteer program. And what we had to do was live on $2 a day for food for a year to, so because that's what our neighbors were doing, you know. So it was like, like getting connected, <laughs> like being like them? Yeah, so it was being like them so that we could understand them. What did you eat? And man, I mean, we pulled our money, money together. Like we, we ate, you know, a lot of eggs, peanut butter. Um, we went to the bakeries, got the bread that they're about to toss out the door. We, uh, our African neighbors taught us how to like grow vegetables and make a garden. And where were you at? Yeah, I was, so I was in this place called Clarkston, Georgia. So it was okay. about ten miles northeast of Atlanta. And you know, according to New York Times, there's like it's like the most diverse square mile in America. Fifty languages spoken. People from all over the world um, lived there. So. so you committed to something where yep. you said, "I'm going to go spend the next two years of my life living off two dollars a day." Yeah. Because you wanted to see what they did. Yeah. So almost I like acting almost homeless. Yeah, so I could learn how to live on less so others could have more. That's great. And to learn how to see people as people and, and understand what they're going through as they got kicked out of their you know country because of war or religious who beliefs. Ra- who raised you to think this way? Because um, that's not like you grew up in Iowa. Did you grow up middle class? Yeah, middle class. I mean, public growing school, up. Public school? Would you go to public school? Yeah, public school, oh. like humble beginnings. Um, you know, and what will make somebody want to do that? Because I get it. Like, yeah, I get it as an adult. I get yeah. it where like a lot of people in the networks were in. They'll go. They'll go spend the weekend in a prison. They'll want to go yeah. see what other people deal with, so they can figure out what they need to do. So you just add. How old were you when you did this? Uh, I was twenty three, fresh out of college. So you're like, I don't want to get a job. I'm gonna live off two dollars a day. Yeah, because I well, I was like. I told my parents this, and, and they're like, you really want to do this? I was like... They must have been mad. Yeah. Did they pay for college? Yeah. Wait, hold on. They, they paid, paid for, for college. college. And you're like, I'm going to put it all on hold. <laughs> yes. I want to live off. I'm trying to do the math real quick. Yes. On about... Private school. You went to private school? Yeah. Private college, yeah. Could you imagine? You have kids. Private. They come to you. Private school, which costs yeah. 10, 20 grand a year, right? Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Okay. Nowadays, yeah. yeah. It was like 100,000. Yeah, two kids in private school. Like yeah. It. And uh, then college. And then saying, I figured out my passion. I'm going to live off $700 a year. Yeah. Thank you, mom and dad, for spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on me. Yeah. I'm gonna put my whole life on hold. Yeah. How was, how'd you sell them on that? Um, Cause they must've been at least at some point going like you, 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 you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were like, okay, well, you know, but my whole life they've always supported me. So anything that I wanted to do, whether it was break dancing, whether it was like, you know, study abroad, yep. they're like, go ahead and do it. You know, like life is about people and experiences and you know, I just basically persuaded them that, like, I told them, like, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to give back. You gave me so much. I want to give back to people. I want to take a gap year, really learn, like, about real life, like, re- you know, figure out, like, it's the, beautiful. the real, you know, because life is all about people. So I felt like if I could understand these people from all walks of life, whether they're homeless or they're millionaires, billionaires or whoever, um, if I was able to empathize with them, understand them, make them feel understood and loved and, and build a relationship with them, then I could do anything in life. Is this the way your parents raised you? Um, yeah, they, they taught me a lot, you know, just ta- always taught me to keep things simple, to be kind, to always express a interest in others, to see people awesome. as a potential friend, um, you know, always wear a smile on my face, compliment people when I meet them. You know, so they taught me a lot of these uh, principles and, and rules and in life, and I think, you know, because of them, I'm I am the way I am today. You're still, I mean, you, if you yeah. think about it, you're still living that same way right now. You're like you're not living you, off two dollars a day anymore. Yeah, life but has you're, changed. But you made your life about service. Yeah. So you spent those couple of years. It's interesting because I, I was thinking that you were a broke break dancer and living off that because I remember when I was broke businessman <laughs> when I first started and yeah. I was living off like twenty bucks a week, twenty bucks for two weeks. You have to go to the store and get a bag of potatoes and you get some onions and you get some eggs and literally there's your food and you have to find three ways to make three different things on a loaf of bread and that was your food for two weeks. That's what I did as an entrepreneur because I refused to get a job and I wanted to do my own thing. Yeah. So transitioning from that, I want I want to make certain I'm, I'm understanding this real quick yes. is. You you do that for two years, then where did the break dancing come in? Yeah, so so you yeah, you were break dancing. So yeah, I was already break dancing. So in I college? started. You yeah, fun at the parties. Yeah, 
I mean, that's that's what Where'd made you go me to popular. Um, Central College, a small school in uh, Central Pella, Iowa. Okay, Central Iowa. Okay, Division three, thousand people there. Um, so after that, so I studied Spanish, majored in exercise science. So I wanted to be a personal trainer. So I was really interested in sports and sports medicine and, and dance. And so all throughout college, I was traveling, I was dancing. I started to teach some workshops. I started to make a little bit of money, and that was cool. And so then, but then I wanted it. I made a five-year plan, you know, year one, do the, the service thing. Year two, so it was only one year. Year two, I wanted to go find my birth mom, reconnect with her, learn you about really my You really laid out a plan like this as a young 20 person? Yeah, because okay. my, uh, my college president was uh, my me- one of my mentors, right? Okay. So he was a um, White House fellow, went to Oxford, was, you know, huge CEO before all the college president stuff. So he said, hey, make a five-year plan. You and know, you really and, listen, and I did it. Like, t- teach me. T- no, no, you got to get me straight with that because yeah. I, I got a kid in college, Terry's yeah. in college. So how did you do it? Like, what what power did that guy have over? Did you like Jedi mind trick you? You will make a five year plan. Like, yeah. have you always been like that? Yeah, because that's like like Tony Robbins talked about on the on the train where he made his like plan for his life. Like, how did you you do that? Because that that would be like very important for everyone here to watch and understand. Base, you know, plain and simple. Like this guy was super successful. Um, a guy that like. You know, I really looked up, looked up to, respected. So I was like, I want to be like him. And you know, he's been there, he's done that. You know, he was like seventy years old or so when he retired. Seventy. Yeah. Okay. And so he was like, he's done all these amazing so things. So I'm like, okay, no, he was my college yeah. president. So I'm Got like, it. I'm gonna do what he says because he's super successful, and he's done pretty much everything that I I've want I want to do. So I'm gonna listen to him. So you've been modeling success for a long time. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So you get out of school. Uh, plan year one yeah. was uh, year one was yeah. Live Years, off two dollars. Yeah, two dollars. Go a day. see mom. Found my birth mom. That would turn out okay. Yep. What's Amazing. that like? like? What's the first thing you say? Hi, mom. You're I'm 23 years old. Remember you left me? Like what? What was that conversation like? Did yeah. you talk first? So it took about a year to find her, and then I was about to leave the country, and then because um, my visa was about to expire in Korea. Yeah, and so my parents were like, "Come home, like you know." You've been there long enough. Like you, now, it's time for you to get a real job. <laughs> like, yeah. use your college were they major. Thinking, what, we're not good enough. I mean, he wants to go find this other mom, and uh, yeah, and my mom. My mom felt like that. I think my mom felt like that. You know, because um, she felt, you know, you know how moms are. Right? I, I get it. And so, anyways, long story short, I, I got an email saying, Zach, we found your mom. When can you come to Seoul? Like, because I was in Busan teaching English for a year, had to do something to make some money and support myself. So I, I was like, okay, I'm gonna come tomorrow, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna come like tomorrow and I'm gonna meet my mom. And so when I got there, um, got to the office, before I walked into the door, I, was, I asked like, hey, w- w- what am I supposed to say? Aren't you guys gonna prepare me? Like, w- what do I say to my mom? And they just opened the door, she put, shoved me in there like, um, Who shoved you in there? Like the, the case manager, they're like, just go in, you know, like meet her. Because they've dealt with that before. Yeah. You were the first Iowa boy. To yeah, so this was a whole international, big adoption agency. And then they, uh, my mom ran up to me, gave me a hug. She was crying. She was like, I love you, son. She said that in English, right? Those were the only words that she could say oh in English. God, I just got the the rest of the whole conversation that day was through translators. But she gave me a hug, and I was like, wow, like this is... Did it feel like your mom? Yeah. Like, like, was it that feeling you got? Like, yeah. you just knew you were with your mom? Yeah, and, you know, we had so many similar, like, features and same nose and everything. And, like, we look really alike. You stay in contact? Yeah, yeah. I just uh, met up with her and um, my half-brother, half-sister uh, a few months ago. She's so, so proud of you. Yeah, I mean. Does she, she understand I'm, what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. You break dance for her? Yeah, yeah. I was showing her some videos of my brother and sister. They're, like, into the arts as well. They're singers. Like, Did, Was she into cool. the arts, your mom? Um, not really, she raised, but yeah, uh, she was, she's always kind of been kind of creative, but not like just as a professional art. She was never a professional artist or anything, but she liked to do it. Okay. I'm always interested in yeah. like, what makes people be who they are. Yeah. And one of the things I recognized is like, you're the, 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 the people that raised you did a great job. They raised yeah. you to think correctly. They taught you to trust and listen to people, which melded who you are. You meet your mom. What's year three? I got to figure out this whole five year plan. This whole, whole thing should be yeah. called how to set up yourself for success. Follow what you do. Listen yeah. to a 70 year old man. What was year three? Okay. So year three, I was like, okay, found my mom, did what, did what I wanted for a while. Now I'm going to actually like make my Iowa parents proud, right? I'm going to use my college major. So I studied, uh, you know, sports medicine. I want to become a personal trainer. Failed the certification test like three times. I'm not 
book smart by any means. I was, you know, you always struggled throughout school. <laughs> really good speller for some reason. And then uh, finally passed the test, became a personal trainer, became their top uh, trainer, like, you know, breaking all the sales records and everything. Really? And then um, I got fired. I got let go because... How'd you let go being a top guy? Yeah, so I was like... Always, you know, at that time I was really into dancing and teaching dance and traveling with it because I started to make some money and became really good at it. And I was able to like generate more money teaching dance part time than I was at my personal training job, right? Because I was. What did you like more? Um, I liked that freedom of like, I mean, both were free, right? You, as a personal trainer, you can make your own hours, you call your own shots. But as a dancer, like, I loved how I could just simply come in, you know, teach for a few hours transform these kids' minds, change their attitudes, get them improve their performance, and then, boom, leave, go on to the next one. So that I was dancing. Yeah. So, so I was dancing teaching them moved how to break you, dance. Yeah. Um, and the other stuff was, like, logical. Yeah, okay. exactly. And so then my boss was like, you got to choose one. You, you know, we want you here, but, you know, every single weekend and some times some, some during the week, you're missing work, and, you know, it's affecting everyone, like, your performance and your clients. So... And I was like, you're not gonna fire me because I'm like the top trainer. Like I felt like I was yeah. like the top dog. And then the next week, boom, he called me in. He's like, I'm sorry, I gotta let you go. And that was a huge shock. So well, then, what did they say exactly? Um, they're just like, you know, I, I told you um, that I gave you a warning. Like you can. What either, was the warning? It was like Zach. Like you either gotta be here or you gotta do they, dance. They helped you make a choice. Yeah. Which you were you were splitting and, your and, so and a lot even though a lot of entrepreneurs do that they've their hands in two things like I want residual income I want to build this continuity program but I also want yeah. to be at this yeah have you noticed yeah. that like I want to be on Facebook and Instagram what do you recommend yes. to that yeah both or one I say niche down okay like, you pick one and kill it pick one and kill it learn everything that you can about it um, all the black hat dark secret stuff like you know and then the everything that you can about it and then just build a brand around it and got it so you're saying when someone you. comes to me hey are you on linkedin yeah. and i'm like i'm not you're saying yeah. just pick one yeah pick one okay definitely so that guy was the first person that really put you in that painful position yeah did that hurt yeah because i hurt my parents most of all they're like we just spent all this money for you to go to school <laughs> to live <laughs> off two dollars yeah. a day to go yeah. meet some other woman that never raised yeah. you yeah yes. and then now yeah, now you're gonna do this loser yeah. right yeah. and so and now you're back to break dancing at 200 bucks a battle yeah. And so then my mom was like, hey, go get another job. So I, I applied for uh, to the YMCA. Did you like it there? Didn't. I went through the whole training program. They're about to hire me. And then um, I said, you know, this just isn't me, you know, and I quit. And that was when I took that leap of faith and I never looked back. What was the leap? That leap of faith was to go all in with my dance dreams. Okay. Um, and to make that into a six-figure career. Did you do it? And I did it. Uh, at, towards the end of my career, I was able to make over $1,000 an hour just teaching dance workshops. So I, I, I know that's not what you're doing now. I know yeah. it's one of your passions yes. you love. I want to give advice out there to some yeah. people out there. Let's do it. Alan Watts is one of my favorites. He always said, you know Alan Watts? I love his material. And he always said, like, anyone that dedicates, like almost like the 10,000 hour rule, you can find a way to get paid. Yeah. For whatever you love doing. What do you recommend to somebody right now that's watching this, that listens, that has a passion, whether it's working out or, and they're getting 80, eight, $18 an hour because they're working at Gold's Gym, but they know they're a good trainer, or they're dancing, or they're a figure skater, or something. What do you recommend? You stepped outside the box. You didn't, you weren't just a dance instructor. Yeah. You own that. What advice do you give to somebody out there with a passion and a dream? Yeah, well, f I mean, first, obviously, find a mentor, find somebody who's been there, done that, like, you know, ask them for advice, pay them for a power hour, pay them for coaching, because you shave time off your learning curve, so you can get to the top faster. Um, the second time, second thing I, I tell people is instead of like just going for it right away, like start it, start up like another side hustle, right? So maybe it's like your personal trainer at Gold's Gym and, you know, making 15, 20 bucks an hour but you want to have your own coaching programs or you want to have your own, own products or supplements. I mean, start it as a side hustle, um, figure out to, uh, a way to make money online, um, doing what you really want to be doing until that takes over what you're currently doing and helps you, you know, make more income and gives Got you more it. time freedom. Got so it. I, I would say those two things, but then also, I mean, it, it's a hustle. The third thing is the hustle and grind, right? It's like, you gotta be, um, 
known, seen, and everywhere, and and be the person that be the go to person in that that industry. And you know, maybe not in the industry in the beginning, but in your neighborhood, you got to become a local celebrity so that you're the person that everybody needs and everybody should use. You've got to announce yourself. You got to yeah. you always put yourself out there. Yeah. And you got to do the things that uh, need to get done, correct? Yeah. You got to figure out a way to get local press and get on local TV channels and get in local news and get on the radio stations and figure out ways to help these people. So you didn't start out, you didn't start off, hey, I'm just charging a thousand bucks an hour. You built that brand. Yeah. Because when I did that and I, I cold emailed people, they're like, dude, you're crazy. Like one was kind of enough to say, hey, like, I mean, you haven't really done anything, Zach. You've never been on a TV show at the time. You've never... Um, you don't have a website. You don't have professional photography. Like, why should I pay you, a, you know, eight hundred fifty dollars an hour, right? So what, was like, an, what was your answer to that? Because a, like, a lot of people think they're not worth it. What was your answer? Because I knew my answer to that. Yeah. What was your answer? Well, to that? I mean, I was like, okay, well, I, no, I just said, you know, you're right. I, I got kind of mad, and I was like, okay, well, I, because I, I kept on hearing no after no after no. Um, well, let me rejection. ask you a question yeah. right now. Why would I pay you a thousand dollars to teach me how to break dance? Yeah, because we're. I'm gonna, asking you right now. Yeah, right now. Right now. I'm going to improve your performance. I'm going to help you win competitions. I'm going to help you you and your team become national champions. Yeah, but, but I, could, I could go find Joe down at the Y does it. Why you? Because I'm going to break things down so simply for you to be able to understand so that I'm going to take you from not knowing and, and holding your hand and walking you through the process and teaching you all the techniques and strategies to make you into the champion. I love it. I love it. So you, did you feel that was real? Yeah, that was real. Do you have videos online that people can watch of you yeah. breakdancing? Yeah, the training, training, lot, training lot, program you can offer. Yeah, I taught a um, got a lot of training programs. Where do people find those? Um, Six Figure Dancer Academy. Nice. So I teach other creatives and people uh, that are choreographers to okay. do what I did with dance. Very cool. Um, but then, yeah, I have some instructional videos out there as well on YouTube. Find it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love check it. it out. I love it. I love it. I love it. And awesome. the, one, the one thing I'll tell everyone watching this right now, if you're watching this YouTube or watching this yeah. on iTunes, or click the little subscribe button. Yeah. Share this with some people you care about. There's people in your life that definitely need to hear this message. And make sure to subscribe and leave us a review. I'd love to. I'd love to see that as well. This is Definitely. this is fascinating. So we're in almost four years now, and yeah. you're going all in on the dance. You got the six figures. You hit your goal. Mm -hmm. What happened? Hurt my back, which ended my career. So, so was, you're, you're telling me nothing actually has ever really worked out yeah. for anybody. You are your parents. So I'm just getting really clear. Like yeah, like it worked <laughs> yeah, out in the end. Yeah. But let's get yeah. really real. Yeah. This is the life of an entrepreneur. Definitely. You went for something, didn't work out. Went for something else, didn't work out. Broke your <laughs> parents' heart, basically. Yeah. That thing didn't work out. Become Definitely. this, didn't work out. Do the next thing, didn't work out. Yeah. Because I never thought I was going to get hurt. Like, I never thought, like, I was, like, in really good shape then, right? I was, like, um, really healthy. I was, like, my, I was, like, I'm never going to get hurt. And my, I remember my fi financial advisor friend saying, Zach, like, what happens if you can't use your hands and your feet? What happens if you can't dance anymore? What are you going to do? And I was like, that's never going to happen, right? And so when it happened, I became super depressed, right? In India, um, I hurt my back. I fell. I still had to perform. Ended up going to the hospital. The doctor came in, said, Zach, you're going to have surgery. Don't think you're ever going to be able to dance again. And that ended my career and I became super depressed, sad. So the same guy who got me into dancing wow. called me up and was like, Zach, you know, now you're depressed. I know you're going through a hard time, but let me tell you about the, you know, Instagram, what I'm doing on Instagram. Cause me and my brother are making a ton of money, helping grow these people's pages. This? Um, this was in 2016. So let me ask you this. How yeah. do you go from, this, this is the part I want people to understand. Mm -hmm. How do you go from break dancing to Instagram? Yeah. In so, one phone call and then change that identity. So again, this this friend of mine was a guy who I really respected and got me into dancing and I made something of it, right? But he introduced me. And so he introduced me again to another opportunity. I, I, I'm just the type of person, I go all in, right? When somebody tells me something, they give, they give me an opportunity, I like, I make it happen, you know, no matter what. Um, and so that's what I did with Instagram, you know, fast forward today, I mean, we're working with the best of them and 220 million network on Instagram and multi-million dollar company just wow in you know two or three years how did you go because we met um about what a year ago yeah but a year ago we met through Josh yeah and he says you guys need to talk yes. I didn't know anything about you you didn't know anything about me right. he says you guys need to meet mm -hmm. where were you at about a year ago 
because I'm seeing what you're doing now. I didn't know you then. Yeah. And then I met you, Breakdancer, oh, Instagram. Yeah. I started seeing everything. Where were you about a year ago? Yeah, a year ago. I mean, um, what did Josh tell you to even talk to me? Like, I would love to know that message. Like, <laughs> hey, you got to talk to Michael. Like, like. Yeah, I mean, Michael. I, so Josh basically said Michael is the best. Like, he, he's gonna transform and change your business and help you go next level. So if that's something you want to do, it's a good sales pitch. I recommend that you attend one of his seminars. He's like, I've been through it. All of my friends have. Um, he's legit. He's the real deal. Like, I'm telling you as a friend and as a mentor that you need to do his programs. And Josh has helped me a lot. And you have helped me a lot. He's another one of those guys. Yeah. That, that recommends something and you listened. Exactly. And so, you know, that leaves clues. Success leaves clues. So I was like, okay, well, all these successful people, Michael Burnoff is super successful. He's changing and transforming so many people's lives and businesses. Okay, well, I want to be part of that too. Yeah, right? and you walked right in first class with me. You come right to <laughs> HIT, which is not where you start. Yes. You went right into the middle, yep. doing all kinds of trance work and like language patterns and everything. And yes. Working on your influence. What was the biggest uh, thing that came out of that? And then I want to talk about what you got going on today. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, it's just like, you know, the, the future pacing, like, um, and just being more aware of like tapping more into my emotional intelligence side because mm. that's my biggest strength that's what I, I i think i have a pretty high eq yeah but after that seminar i you know i strengthened it and increased it so i was able to become more aware of myself like even my body language other people's languages saying if i stand this way or do this way it turns people on like they like me you're more actually caring off. more you're, paying, I'm, you're a caring I'm, I'm guy caring more. really caring now yeah 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 because i'm always very observant but i'm i'm more cautious and caring on how i talk to people yep. how i move around them and and you know affects my relationships with them and you know life is about people so like you taught me how to talk to people better and you know when which is over. your whole, which is yeah. your whole business the whole business everyone's business i love it so a sistagram yeah. you are working assisting people on instagram correct yeah so we and do. I see the smile on your face. I'll yeah. say it again. It's Instagram. You you smile. It yeah. lights up. I love it. Yeah. I love Watch it. Watch this. Two dollars a day. Yeah. Shoot. It doesn't $2 make you light a day? up. Mm. No, they don't like that. But a sistogram that lights you yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Which which I love. Yes. I love. That's the reaction you see yes. of a person that lights up at what they do. Everyone should be lit up by what they do. So give me a day in the life of a guy that has the magic pill. Like I, I, when we were in Napa together, you and I, and I watched it on the board, I'm like, dude, I need to spend more time with Zach. Like I, I knew you, it's a break dancing moves, showed me some stuff, but man, you were, you were sharing some stuff there that was profound. Yeah. Even the idea that a human being can find another influencer on Instagram, pay him a nominal fee, 50 or 100 bucks, because they're no different than a breakdancer. Yeah. They haven't figured out how to monetize that. Yeah, a lot of them haven't. Call them up. Say, I'll give you 300 bucks. Do you yeah. mind putting a post on your wall and yeah. saying thank you? Yeah. And how big that could be, tapping in the network. Yeah. Talk to me a little about the day in the life of somebody who helps people make social media work. Because I believe a lot of people are on there like posting and talking and commenting and stuff. But like you've turned this into something in the real world. You've gotten human beings as much on Instagram as much as physically into rooms changing the world. Talk yeah. to me about this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, I, everybody has a product and service they want to get out there, right? And some people are better that uh, at it than others, right? That's just the, 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 the way the world works. But um, what I've learned is, um, you know, by paying people like what, by paying people and showing them some love and respect, like, and and teaching them how to monetize their brand, sell more products as an influencer. Um, I'm showing them love and respect because, hey, I, I, I give them what they want to be paid. Got it. But then I teach them how to monetize that more. And that, and then I work that relationship to get bigger opportunities and relationships with like countries like Dubai, right? So when I didn't have a lot of followers and I, and, you know, I was just starting out and nobody knew about me, um, I reached out to these big pages that had millions of followers on them. And I'm like, hey, join me, like join, like let's work together. Let's create this uh, you like empire. 40, you had 40 followers yeah. and you went to the Sultan of Brunei basically and said, can I work yeah. together with you? Know, you? you know how, is so I- Tell me about how that, uh, yeah. what does that email look like or that direct message, the DM? So I actually reached out to Dubai. Okay. Like how do you reach out to Dubai? Cause I, I understand how to even reach out to Warren Buffett. How do you reach out to Dubai? <laughs> I, you know, I, I went to their, um, I go with them, went to their website, found like their um, the, their whole team, went on to LinkedIn, 
um, just I just Google searched actually okay. um, their name at Dubai and then all of these emails started popping up and I emailed like five of them um, some everybody didn't answer except one and then I was like hey like I know that you're working on the 2020 campaign 20 million tourist visits by 2020 through influencers like I'd love to work for free and just help you smash that goal and she's like oh okay so I'm like this guy who's like willing to help her and make her job easier and so she has to do less work and it's all for free okay so you're and telling so, me the strategy is yeah. you reach out yeah. and say I'd like to help you yes and I out. don't want to annoy you yeah I'm ready to go to work yeah and I'm just gonna make it all happen and make your life a whole lot easier and you have to do a lot less work so it's gonna save you um, so, you know a lot of time and stress because I'm gonna do it all so if you reached out to like an influencer yeah. saying, I love your message, like I, I did this recently, I reached out to a hockey player I really admired and I reached yeah. out to him and said, hey, I get your book that just came out yeah. or a couple of years ago that came out, I'd like to help share that with the world. Yes. He's on the podcast a couple of days later. Does yeah. that make sense? Because exactly. I want to share it. So you're saying the secret formula is reach out to people and offer help. Yeah. And then when I offered help to Dubai, I, I, I got power because they're like, okay, now, like, you can invite influencers to our country. We can pay for it, right? We'll, we'll cover the cost. We'll fly them out first class on Emirates. Give me an idea of an influencer. You know, so I, they're targeting 10 countries, like the Nordic countries, like Indochina, you yeah. know, like Norway, for example. So I was like, contacted all the influencers in Norway. It's like, hey, um, I'm representing Dubai. I mean, we're partner. Like, we, I'm Did working you have on, a Dubai email address? Yeah, so I had, like, their stamp you of... You had Zach Benson at Dubai? I didn't have the exact at Dubai, but I I had um, their Letterhead. letter of, of approval and everything that I needed to so reach out. Influence. Yeah, and so I said, "Hey, would you be willing to come to Dubai? All expense paid. This is what you're going to get. This is what you have to do. Let me know if you're interested. We can chat more." And then, by giving them free trips to Dubai, I was able to build a relationship with that influencer and tap into tap root into their network. And that's how I have a 220 million network now. And then because I give, give all these people free trips and help them, you know, you know, build up their brands and, and travel the world for free, I'm able to promote products for free. So basically you're telling me that what you're doing is you're able to get influencer from Norway. Yeah. A free trip to anywhere. anywhere. Maldives. Maldives. Bali. Bali. Make it happen. Pimped out. Amazing stay, right? Yeah. They then promote that they're there with their phone out the whole time, everything they're doing. That right? builds and grows that their builds brand. builds credibility, br grows their brand. I can, they can I, hashtag yeah. back and, and comment back. Everybody wins. You're brokering. Yeah. So you don't have to own a property. Yeah. And you don't have to be the influencer. Uh -huh. And both of them like you. Yeah. And they're both in your phone. You got, yeah. you can hook a bay with B. Yeah. That's Middle what I do. Now I'm just like a super connector. Just connect people. It's genius. Whether they want to meet The Rock, Dwayne Johnson whether they want to meet whoever, we can make it happen. How do you meet Dwayne Johnson? So one of his wardrobe stylists actually um, grew up in Iowa with okay. Benjamin. Because why not? My my business partner yep. now. Yeah, Benjamin's great. <laughs> you're so watching this, Benjamin, you're great. She's uh, doing some big things with The Rock's team and Bill and Melinda Gates and you know a few others, right? Really influential people. And so by helping her, and not really asking for anything for a while. Like we just simply grew her Instagram. Um, she asked us, you know, what can I do for you? You know, do you guys have, what, What? you know, can I do you a favor? And then um, when the time came, you know, we needed that favor and she connected us. Um, she can, so one like person positive mafia. wanted to connect with The Rock and then we made it happen, connect with their teams. And so, yeah. Basically, what I'm understanding here right now is you're able to put people together and you have a very simple formula. And this would work, this even works on Instagram, off Instagram. This yeah. is like literally you could walk into a business yeah. that you want to have them help you eventually and just say, What can I do to help? Yeah. And That's you're the best way. evoking a law of help first, ask second. Yeah. But you're the platform you're using is Instagram. Yeah. Just so you're more of like a networker, <laughs> yeah. influencer than a social media guy. Yeah. You just so happen to be using Instagram, right? Correct? Yeah, and we can grow accounts really well, better and faster than anybody. How do we world. do that? Um, well, you got any yeah, secrets with, right now? I mean, 2020, it's really hard to grow okay. on Instagram. Organic growth is over. You can't simply just post and got it. 
you know, go viral. Like on TikTok and Byte and some of these new platforms that are coming out, you can. There's viral potential. And Instagram used to be that way as well. Um, but, you know, because we have that huge network of influencers, sure. we basically pair up the client with their target market influencer, so in the same industry, have them do shout outs promoting this person's um, content on their walls. Okay. Um, until they get their followers. So it's a slow and steady process throughout the month. Through credibility. Yeah. Social proof credibility. Great content comes more growth. And then when you distribute that content on, you know, in great influencers, you get super growth. Who, who have you met? What influencers have you met that, like, the world would love to, like, that, that we don't have to get into, like, I don't know whether you liked them or not, but who, who have you met that the world would be just, like, that's so cool that you've had a chance to exchange emails, meet, talk to, type of people yeah i mean i've met like mark Wahlberg. when you know like uh, love mark Wahlberg. yeah mark and mark funky bunch back in the old days yeah they just opened he up could break dance yeah th- those guys I bet he get dances. down yeah. yeah they opened up some stores in iowa the Wahlberger. nice joint, and then um, so you're able to help promote that yeah so then i was able to like meet him in person and and that sort of thing we never actually promoted how did that, how did that happen so how, you didn't meet him directly who introduced you? i want to hear yeah. i want to see the lineup yeah how did that happen who introduced who to who so when you're part of like these high level masterminds yep. too, yep. they bring in speakers and people to do presentations and workshops. Yep. And so he was a speaker at one of these mastermind events I attended. Yep. And that's how we were able to make that connection. Then we nice. got a chance to just, you know, talk. So it, it, it could be, uh, you know, different things, right? People that have worked with them, that are connected with them, that they trust and they like, and you know, I help them with something and then they int- make, make the introduction. Um, other times it's just, you know, meeting them, networking at events. So, I love it. Yeah. So you network, yeah. you use social media as a platform. Yeah, when you have a big following, you can connect with anyone. Like, when you have that blue check or when you have a huge 100,000 followers or 50,000 followers and you get a DM um, and you add value and say, hey, I'm gonna, I just see that you like what you did. I see that you, you just wrote a new book that I loved. I'd love to share it with my whole community. Boom. You get get to meet them in person. Got them on the podcast. That's how, how, how it all starts. So do you do you immediately, yeah. like, I, we usually, you always think about what you were before. So you were before a dead broke dancer, correct? Yeah, yeah. That was no different than the girl or guy posing and flexing on Instagram right now that you know making no money. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Do you relate with them? like the transition that you went through, you know what I mean by that, right? Like you you were the modern day Instagrammer flexing, looking like you're tough, break dancing for $200 battling a week. Do you relate with those people? Like you look at them going, you know, you could be so much more if you could get out there, you just need exposure? Yeah. Cause that's what changed your life. I mean, so you think you could dance, that make you a difference? So you think in dance was a stepping stone to grow and build my brand, yep. right? So I could use that name to um, reach out to studios and that's what got me a lot of work, uh, paid workshops so you could charge a thousand bucks an hour when you were on that show yeah well, before that show you cannot i could if i was the best of the best and i was smart at marketing and selling and and scaling and, and that sort of thing but i wasn't skip that step yeah so i was good but i wasn't the greatest of all time great dancer but i bu- was smart enough to build a brand network the right people um, get my foot in the door and then teach in over 50 countries and, you know, make the six figure, um, secret formula, right? Three workshops a week, ages five to eight, nine to 12, 13 and up $50 per person, $5 to the studio per person. Um, you know, four hour work week or six hours, whatever. And then you make six figures. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So back to today and what you got going on right now. Um, what do you do? Like, let's say you're gonna, we're gonna meet after this. We're gonna talk about what you can do to help us out. What, mm-hmm. what, what, what are we doing? People come to us when they need growth, right? Okay. And they want to, you know, grow and scale faster online. So we basically make people we a viral brand you on get people social friends. media and Instagram, right? We get them fans that actually are interested in their content and they actually want to buy, right? So it's not like a giveaway where it's like, hey, follow. Win an iPad, yeah. Yeah. It's like literally getting me the people that want to watch this. Exactly. Right. And so it, it's a slow and steady approach, but we're, I mean, able to grow 10, 20, 30,000, 50,000 followers, 
USA ones a month. That's amazing. Yeah. Of people that they're looking for. Not yes. a bunch of people that don't speak English over another country. It's an English All English speaking. I love All it. US people. Nice. Yeah. So you speak other you speak Spanish yeah, too? I speak Spanish. I lived in no Spain Korean? and Mexico. And then um I speak Korean too. Full yeah, full blown? Yeah, yeah. My Spanish is better than my okay, Korean. Okay, all right. Well, you got to have what you got to have. <laughs> yeah. So how do, how, do people, um, how do people get a hold of you? Yeah. I mean, um, you guys can follow uh, my travels at Zach Vacay. Well, I get to follow um, you. I don't have to even yeah. like, put on suntan lotion. I can yeah. just follow you on you travel. Can follow me there. Um, you can go on a trip. Hopefully, I'm going to be hosting some Masterminds events in the Maldives. Um, but, yeah, if you have any growth questions, um, you need help with your Instagram account, you can go to our website, uh, sistergram.us. Nice, and we can you know set up a call. So we'd love to connect. I and love it. Yeah, I mean, what are, what are three pieces of advice uh, you would give any wannabe or intelligent or incredibly growing social media person? Three pieces of advice you'd give them right now, whether they work with you or not. Three pieces of advice that if I sat down with you, these last three pieces of advice you ever can give the rest of your life mm -hmm. on social media, what would you say? Yeah, so s social media, like people show what they want to show, not necessarily everything that's going on in their life, but nowadays. Um, what's really popular and tip number one is be vulnerable and authentic like talk about your struggles talk about your a, a time when you um, maybe lost a big deal overcoming a sickness uh, an addiction something bad happened share about it be open with that be consistent and persistent with the small things that seem to make no difference at, at all in the act of doing them and just do them day in day out so posting you know a few times a day is better than once every other day, right? Got it. Um, those are simple foundational rules. And the third thing is, and it's more a secret, like if we're talking about Instagram, the hashtags, right? Think of Instagram as like Google and YouTube. People are searching for things every single day, where to travel to, what to eat. Okay, anyways, the trick is you type in these mega hashtags. Let's say like you wanna go to the Maldives on one of my trips. You type in the that Maldives. was a good command. You want to go on one of my trips. That was you using oh. the techniques I taught you. Oh. You literally put in there. Right. You, you, you want to go on one of my trips. Yes. You will go. Yeah. Yes. You're going to see all of these posts that use the hashtag the Maldives. Um, and if you're just starting out, likelihood of you hitting that top post that has, you need thousands of likes and hundreds of thousands of followers. But if you see the hashtags that are, that are related to the Maldives, like Maldives hotels, that hashtag might is a smaller hashtag. So use hashtags that have smaller number of posts on them. Post three times a day, and your content that you're working so hard to create will be seen, which will drive more exposure, traffic, and sales to your business. Really? Yeah. I love it. So if someone has a sales mentality up front, is that the right mentality? No, yeah. never. People stop doing that. So I'm going to go sell things on Instagram. Don't say that, right? I mean, you see a lot of people just like doing product pushes. Like, hey, like product, buy it. Okay, no foreplay. Doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't work. Yeah. Right. You need influencers. You need user-generated content from other people like using your product, wearing your clothes, um, edifying, like saying this is the best because of why, like X, right? Um, that stuff sells. And then also creating a, a brand and, you know, with influencers and um a great content strategy will get you sales. So here's my here's my thought. So and be very blunt. I'm mean, yeah. gonna be very very blunt right yeah. now. You ready? Yeah. Do you think most people are wasting their time online, the way they're doing it? Yeah. Yes. Like hundred percent. Because a lot of people are doing it just the wrong way. I mean, like you know, they're not keeping up with the the trends. They're like, okay, I'm gonna post every single day. Well, that that no longer works on Instagram unless you have you know all the secret hacks and 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 you have a big network right the game has changed so people need to continue to do their research do their homework buy like the latest courses and um you know apply that knowledge for a platform that still has a lot of organic growth potential Got and it. instagram no longer has a lot of organic growth potential. would you still bet on instagram right now instagram TikTok. They're going to be around for a long, long time, right? And I would say, you know, influencer marketing, it's now $15, $20 billion industry. It's all through, like, Instagram and YouTube, really. So um, they're not going anywhere. They just keep on growing and growing and growing. So, I mean, just think of it as, like, okay, invest some money, grow your page. 
um, pay some influencers to shout you out, build your tribe, grow your following. And then think of it as like an asset that's going to continue to yeah. go up in value as you keep growing it. Um, when, cause when you have an audience, you have a community and you give a lot of value, you can sell anything. So would you consider yourself more of an influencer or a guy that organizes influencers? I'd say both. Okay. Yeah. I, I help them, help them, you know, I influence people to do more of what they love every single moment of the day, which makes them happier. I love it. And we grow their brands so that they can do that. Well, you heard it here. Stop wasting your time, Zach. I absolutely oh, appreciate you coming out. This is amazing. Thank you so much. We're either going to do one of two things afterwards. Yeah. We're either going to go break dance. Yes. We're going to talk Instagram. We'll do both. Okay. We'll take this over there. We'll do yeah. some break dancing. All right. Um, and All if you're right. watching this, yes. definitely get a hold of this man. He's yeah. going to help you out, uh, growing your influence. Use the strategies he shared with yeah. you. And uh, I'll just tell all of you, you know, live an above average life. Go get what it is you want and absolutely um, follow the little link. If you're watching this on YouTube, follow the link down below. Check out the training we have associated with this about truly how to step up the next level in your life. And that's one of the things most people do is they do not build the momentum that they need in their life. So check the little link down below and um, start building a little bit more momentum out there. And we'll have to put together something also for people to watch. So appreciate everybody and have a great day. And Zach, let's go, uh, let's go take this and uh, let's break down. <laughs>